If you're trying to design something, you need to be able to see it. If you're in front of somebody like Norman Foster or Ken Shuttleworth, they pride themselves on their ability to do really fast, flashy sketches. It's very intimidating. So if you're an engineer who doesn't think, well, I, I, I could do a drawing, but it would be three lines and it would have some arrows on it. Um, and some architect comes along and goes <laughs> and puts trees and people and everything else. It's all done in three dimensions and it's uh, full of animation. That's an intimidating thing. So the engineers at that point don't even offer the three line sketch, which they should be offering. And it is intimidating. I find it intimidating to say, right, here's my humble offering. Um, so for the velo, you'd start with the track. And I'd, I'd These things all end up, seem to end up as ellipses or circles. <laughs> Every time I draw anything, it ends up that shape. I've noticed something very funny, just in the, in the way of uh, the relationship of my drawings to my, my body. I like to either work at a wrist radius, like that, or I would use an ar uh, go from the elbow, at which point it becomes this sort of size. <laughs> or, or you might just do it from the finger, at which point it becomes that sort of size. But, the, but the, these things are all related to the bits of the body that you're using to draw them. So for me, it's a very physical activity. It's more like um, you know, physically engaging with the thing you're doing. Not just looking at it, but you're, you're occupying it. I, I, I draw the flow lines of everything. So if I was trying to draw a skyscraper, I would draw the forces just coming down and flying off into the... Ooh, you know, that's a skyscraper. It's, you can see everything coming down and you can sense the um, the forces coming down to the ground. I would find it very. I find it very difficult. I would find it hard to draw a skyscraper that shape. I know that's a lot. That's a very popular shape for skyscrapers. <laughs> but it's, you can see how it, it really just feels alien. Yeah, I mean, it's very rare that you find an engineer who can sketch. The people who are coming out of university, having studied engineering. They don't sketch, but because they don't sketch, they don't look around very much. So what we what we find a lot is that people have no idea of what they're surrounded by. Which for some, you know, for people who are designing things to go into the real world, it seems bonkers. But if you ask people, can you do a drawing of a suspension bridge, or can you draw a tree? How does a tree work? Or the human? Can you draw an arm? They got no idea. They really have cultivated the relationship between opening their eyes, looking at what's around them, and then trying to understand it. And for me, it's the sketching process is part of that whole thing. If you can understand it, then you can draw it at which point you've got a fighting chance that if you're going to build it, it might actually, actually work. So I use a sketchbook. I think it, there's a very strong relationship between how comfortable this whole process feels and what you're going to get out of it. So I mean, this one's A5, and it's very nice paper. It's sort of soft paper. I like to fill a page with something and then go on to the next page on one idea per page. The other thing that is really important is the pencil. This has a soft lead. The reason, because you can do everything from a very fine line, delicate, to actually quite a heavy line. And the heavy line is really important to show shadow, even for yourself, so you can understand when things become a bit more complicated, you can start to bring out the three-dimensionality of it, use, ju just using the intensity of the pressure on the pencil. So the relationship between the paper, the size of the book, to make it comfortable to put in a bag, and the pencil is, is, is important. Sometimes you can be very geometric. I might be doing three ver variations on something. You know, and then I say, well, I, and then I draw it again underneath, and I say, well, how am I going to hold that up? There's a sort of sense of, and you say, well, actually, those are a bit fussy, but I quite like that one. The nice thing about these books is that they enable you to do a sequence. I can now draw 10 different versions of how to support this thing. So all I'm doing is just exploring options, each one of which is basically drawn on the same scale. And then after a while I say, well, yeah, I actually got that one, that, that looks quite interesting. At that point, that becomes the trigger for another sequence. So I now draw another sequence of things, and I might, at that point, try and work it out a bit more rationally, so I draw it bigger. All of this is sort of engineering shorthand, but it has in it the bones of how the physical world is going to operate. I can draw this way, I can draw comfortably enough, but I actually have to turn the book round. If I want to draw the other way, I draw it. And if I don't do that, I find it very, it's very uncomfortable for me to draw towards me. If I'm drawing that way, I have to move my entire arm 
here comes a sort of sequence of things. This has some form to it as well. So I can, I can actually get it to the place where I feel really comfortable about what's happening. Uh, so I've now got to hold that down or something. So I hold that down somehow. You might put little people in. I, you can actually take it straight into three dimensions. So I can, I can turn that into a three dimensional drawing quite easily and um, work my way through off into the distance. So now I've got a structure and I've got a, a landscape underneath and it starts to become something which I can think more of as a building. None of this I would have got to in a computer, and that, I don't know how long that was, five minutes or something, or ten minutes, to get to there from a single line here, and actually could be quite an interesting project. I tend to design things on trains, sitting in railway stations. You can't have access to all of your fancy hardware there, so it's much easier just to have a book, and you just doodle away in the book. Or even, we were doing a thing the other day and we really did draw on straight onto the napkins on the table because you got to put it somewhere. That, that was a sketch that was done between three of us over breakfast. And you could draw something on the napkin and then somebody else would respond to it because it was there as, a, as, if you like, as an object to refer to. So you could share it straight away. And then another one would appear and another one would appear. So we ended up with a whole napkin covered full of doodles. And that became a really, really good you know, cross-stimulation. If we hadn't had that napkin, we wouldn't have got anything like as far, I don't think.